False color can be used for three different things. Not clipping your highlights, keeping your shadow detail, and keeping things consistent. The theory stays true for any camera and any monitor. I'm gonna open up the lens all the way. Red is sensor clipping, and I'll just iris pull until there's no clipping. And then I will turn off our false color. This looks kind of crazy, but we aren't clipping. So in this case, I would use a stop reduction LUT. Let's see what minus three looks like. Put ISO back to where we were, and that looks good. Purple is crushed, blue is just a little before crushed. Our exposure tool is telling us that it's dark. I'm just gonna get it to a point where it might be okay. I will remove some ND, and that looks like an acceptable exposure. I have the monitors calibrated so that when it looks good on the monitor, it's gonna look good, and I know what I'm recording is gonna be accurate to what I'm looking at. If you step onto a camera that you haven't used with a monitor that you haven't used, you wanna look at your false colors. And let's just say I have no idea if this is clipping or not. I am gonna turn on our false colors, and I know that red is clipping, and I'm just gonna get it out. And we'll take the yellow out too. That's number one of false colors. Make sure that you're not clipping. Good for using outside, good for using in high dynamic range scenes. So we've been looking at false colors on the log image. I will change it to look at false colors on the Rec. 709 image, which even further protects you. On the Alexa, this is easy. Exposure tools, monitoring based now. Remove our ND, open up, hit our false colors on, I'll add an ND, see what that does. So we're still a little bit hot, so I'll just stop down a little bit. Let's say we wanna get rid of the yellow. I'll say that I'll land on that. This looks good. It looks a little bright to my eye, but we know that we're not clipping and we're not crushing any shadows, so we could easily pull this down a little bit, or if you wanted to just be right, right off the camera, I could stop down by eye, and we're still good with our shadows on the left and right side of the frame. And if we wanted to pull it down a little more, we're still good. A little blue is okay. Don't clip your highlights, keep your shadow detail, and keep things consistent from shot to shot. Let's consider the chair here, our person. I could say, okay, our exposure looks good here. What do our false colors look like? Okay, so we have some pink on the left that moves over to green. And then when I move to the next scene, I want to match where that false color is from scene to scene, from shot to shot. I find that having a face have one side of the face be pink, one, have one side be green, or somewhere around there is a good place to be. And then you can keep things consistent because sometimes when you go outside, you'll overexpose because you can't see the monitor. The monitor looks dark, so you'll brighten it up. And then when you're inside in a dark environment, the monitor's so bright that you'll underexpose because things just look too bright. So the false colors won't lie and it'll put you in a good spot when you're going from scene to scene. You can view on the Rec. 709 or on the log. I have found myself lately viewing false colors on the log image because it's telling you what's happening with the sensor. Whereas when you're looking at false colors based on the Rec. 709 image, it's telling you what's happening based on Rec. 709. So this is a false color based on the Rec. 709 and I will pull out the red and then just put a little bit more red back in and hit view log and it will give me the false colors based on the log. When you do this based on the Rec. 709 image, it will make your image look more accurately exposed straight off the camera. When you do it on the log image, it needs some stop reduction LUTs or you can change your exposure index to get it right so that you can tweak it in post. I have a couple questions from the Discord which you should join and I'll go over those now. Why is it more useful than other stuff? Going back to keeping a person consistent, if we look at that pillow on the chair, I can easily see the false colors on the chair. If I'm looking at a person or a scene on a waveform, I view that as more of a global look at what's happening. The left side of that cushion is pink and the right side is green, and you know from where you've selected you want it to be that that is correct. It shows you exactly where on the frame in a really easy and quick way to see what is happening. Finding this chair on the waveform is just a little slower to see what's happening. What false color do you aim for? I lately have just been aiming for keeping the whole scene within the dynamic range of the sensor. If you do that on cameras right now, you should be pretty good. If I'm shooting faces, get it in the pink and green split and you'll be good. And then also it's just a tool to help you. So if I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh, that's too bright. I want it to be darker. I can just do it by eye and then I can just check. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is what I like. False colors are telling me that it's okay. You can also use zebras, which are kind of the same 
as false colors, but you can dial them in. So I can say, I don't want any highlights above 95%. I'm going to say zebra. I'll go monitoring based and I'll go high. I'll just say 95. I want everything to be below 95. So then we'll go back here, exposure tool. So we can see, I don't know if you can see it on that monitor, but our zebras are here. So zebras are like a false color that only show one area or two if you dial it in and you can keep it turned on if you're shooting outside. So you, whenever you see them, you know, in a bright scenario that you have to stop down, for example. Sun is changing, oh, I'm shooting, I need to stop down. No zebras, I'm good to go. So zebras, waveform and false colors are all showing you the same thing Waveform will show you a little bit more information, but you have to kind of look harder at it. Zebras are like a, used as an indication to stop down, or if you want to use zebras on somebody's face, like we did with the chair, you can set them to, you know, 55 to 60% so that you know, anytime you shoot a face for whatever project you're doing, you want them to be there. Or if you want the faces to be darker, set it to 30%. I like to look at a monitor with nothing on it. So I toggle back and forth between false colors and the log image and occasionally use zebras if I'm moving around fast outside. Another question, how does it play when intentionally underexposing or overexposing? When I intentionally overexpose, I will put LUTs on the monitor that are stop reduction LUTs, and I will look at the false color based on the log image. You don't want to look at false color based on a Rec. 709 image if you are using stop reduction LUTs, because depending on the monitor you're, that you're using or the camera that you're using, it might tell you that you're not clipping when you are. So it's good to view the false color and your exposure tools on the log image when you are intentionally over and underexposing. Moonlight scene. How do you play your brighter areas if you're going really dark? You wanna be brighter than you think. The complicated part about false colors, which you need to be careful of, is you can see right here, a minus four stop LUT on here. That's currently on the camera. I am going to turn on our false colors. All our false colors are monitoring based. Everything looks good. I'm gonna check our log C and we can see that it is clipping. We're seeing no indication of that here. Anytime I'm using stop reduction LUTs or changing the exposure index to kind of do the same thing as stop reduction LUTs, I have to look at false color based on the log image because this looks fine to me, but it's actually not fine. So be careful of that. This is a Rec. 709 image, but our exposure tool is lying to us until we look at it on the log image. Now let's move over to the small HD and using false color on that monitor and not through the camera. Same setup as before. We're gonna mimic working on a different camera and doing this all through the monitor. I prefer to use these monitors. They are just a wise investment. I'm gonna go into the camera and turn the SDI processing to log C. Now we have a log image on this monitor. I will add a new tool. I will go to look and add it to the page and and I have my 709 LUT. Now this looks the same as it looked before, but the LUT is on top of the log image in the monitor. So we can add our exposure tools and right off the bat, this is what it looks like. So I can go into here and adjust it a little bit. So I'll turn it on on this monitor. There is an airy style false colors and ignore look is turned on. I'll turn off ignore look and I'll keep the look on. So we have two options here, same as we were doing before. We have the false colors based on the 709 image. So we can see if we ignore the look, it will be based on the log image. So we can still just as before know that we are not clipping even wide open right here and we'll turn this off and we can turn on our look and our exposure tool to not ignore the look. And if we wanna operate by looking at 709, we can see that. And I'm gonna look at the exposure tool on the camera and I'm not looking at the monitor right now. I'm gonna go till the red remove, until the red goes away from the wall and it's gone. False colors are matching up to what is in the camera, which is good. And we're giving it a log feed so that we can view it without the look as well. Okay, so I know that I want my exposure to be right here and we'll put on our look and that's too bright. So I'm going to put a different look. I'm gonna go Airy 709 minus three. So that looks good to me. Actually, the sun is brightening up outside so I would be somewhere around here and that looks good. Let's turn on our exposure tool and it's taking the Rec. 709 into account. 
we'll turn it on and I'll see, oh, we're not clipping. I'm gonna bring up our exposure, bring up our exposure. And I am looking at the viewfinder over here and it is completely clipped in the log signal. This is also where it can become tricky because it says that we're not clipping here, but we are clipping. So the small HD is considering the clipping point a little too high where the log image on the Alexa at 800 ISO, it clips a little bit lower than this. But as we go up to 1600, where it clips closer to 100, we can see that it's showing that there's clipping here. So we're gonna go back to exposure tool, ignore look, and I'm gonna go back to 800 ISO. This is where you need to dial this stuff in because we're clipping right now. I'll roll on this. You could see how much we're clipping, but the monitor's saying that we're not clipping. So I'm gonna to try to match this to what I see on the viewfinder. I'm gonna map my own look, map one. And what I'm gonna do is edit this so that I can slide this slider to match what I see on the viewfinder and I'm gonna go just a little bit more. So that's a little bit more and I'm going to save this. So now I know that based on our log image, we can have an exposure tool that we customized based on how the camera is actually clipping and that I can also verify on the viewfinder over here. I'll edit our map and add one. Let's just say green, middle gray so that we can kind of do the same thing that we did on the couch where we have our green and pink. And then we could add another for pink. And I'm gonna move pink up one stop, 55 to 65. And that might not be exact, but it's gonna be okay. And then I will get our couch to have pink and green, kind of like what we were looking at before. And I will turn off this, turn back on our look. And that is how you would dial this in in the monitor. If you're doing this through your monitor and you're in a situation where one of the built-in exposure tools isn't working properly, like for example, we are clipping here and it's not telling me that, make your own and use your in-camera features to determine how to set the monitor. Spending like an hour to dial this in and then having it be right for every shoot moving forward is very much worth it because then you will just never have a problem with exposure ever. All right, peace.